people let us uh, look at uh, continue with primary open angle glaucoma till now we have finished this much in clinical features uh, signs we are now we need to look at visual field defects let's start off with a recap so primary open angle glaucoma poag also called as chronic simple glaucoma of adult onset what glaucoma is we have looked at the definition we looked at the rate of production of aqueous humor how it's uh, is produced how it is drained then we looked at what normal uh, tension or low tension glaucoma is then we looked at what ocular hypertension is and then we looked at why glaucoma is so important it is a leading cause of blindness and uh, we looked at the classification of glaucoma primary in primary we saw congenital developmental then in adult actually we are currently in this one primary open angle glaucoma secondary also we have seen the causes then we saw the epidemiology mostly europeans africans hispanic people above age of 40 then above age of uh, 80 right so 50 60 70 these people usually will get uh, this uh, primary open angle glaucoma right uh, then what and all we saw we saw it's a slowly progressive disease they will not even know that they are having visual loss unless they are very sensitive they will not know that they have visual loss right so what did we see their angle will be open in the gonioscopy they will check that their angle is open right so that is why it is open angle glaucoma over years and years their intraocular pressure will have slowly increased predisposing factors we saw intraocular pressure will be raised the family history they might have of some myosinin optinurin gene we saw that age 50 60 70 race we saw africans black people myops uh, myopia people will have a central retina a central corneal thickness if it is thin they are having a risk factor to glaucoma diabetics hypertensives cigarette smokers people who have graves ophthalmic disease corticosteroid users okay all these people are having risk of glaucoma now pathogenesis why does the intraocular pressure rise in primary ang uh, angle uh, open angle glaucoma because of uh, the trabecular meshwork getting clogged right so stiffening sclerosis of trabecular meshwork will lead to decrease in the aqueous outflow right that is why it causes primary open angle glaucoma uh, what happens to the optic nerve because of this because of the increase in pressure right mechanical pressure in, will increase also there could be vascular insufficiency no proper blood supply so retinal ganglion cells are undergoing apoptosis death no growth factors they are getting so they are getting damaged so symptoms we saw they could be asymptomatic they wouldn't be very uh, uh they they would be adapting to the scotomas they don't know that they have the scotomas right they have negative scotomas headache they will have they can have then uh, difficulty in reading close things right then frequently changing presbyopic glasses delayed dark adaptation right all these are symptoms then significant loss of vision they can have at the later stage severity of glaucoma we saw then uh, clinical features when the patient comes you will check the anterior segment open angle will be there pupillary reflex can be sluggish then you saw intraocular pressure will show diurnal variation if the variation is greater than 5 mm it is sus uh, suspect, uh, suspicious of uh, primary open angle glaucoma if it is over 8 mm it is diagnostic of glaucoma then optic disc changes we saw early changes we saw early changes um, oval cup asymmetry large cup splinter hemorrhage pale area atrophy of retinal nerve fiber all these are early changes in um, advanced glaucomatous we saw advanced glaucomatous changes marked cupping 0.7 to 0.9 thinning of neuroretinal rim there can be notching of the rim especially up to the disc margin we saw this nasal shifting of retinal vessels we saw then bayonetting sign right and pulsation of the retinal arterioles again pathognomic then we saw lamellar dot sign right all these are advanced then uh, finally we came to atro uh, optic atrophy so all this we have seen till now so let's continue we have to continue where visual field defects so where are we guys so are you able to, uh, to know where exactly we are currently we are here visual field defects we have to understand only after about 40 percent of axons are damaged they will know about visual field defects right so that is what you have to understand here 40 percent is quite a huge number so the, this is uh, how you will check right perimetry and all that you will check the visual field we'll always focus on the right eye so right eye this is the normal visual field right that's what they have shown here right this is the normal visual field here you have the central vision there you have the blind spot right 
and uh, what else this same thing they have drawn and shown here same thing please focus only on the right eye here right eye same thing they have drawn here they have shown the blind spot also this is the normal field vision okay so they are saying to understand visual field defects you should understand the anatomy let's see what anatomy they expect us to know they are expecting you to know the distribution of retinal nerve fibers okay so this is the right eye definitely so here you have fibers from nasal half of the retina come directly to the optic disc as superior and inferior radiating fibers so superior inferior radiating fibers right then this is nasal isn't it from nasal half this will be temporal those from macular area so this will be the macular area those from macular area come horizontally as papulo macular bundle let's look at that here papulo macular bundle they come directly into the optic disc that's what they are seeing right then fibers from temporal retina arch above and below the macula so they arch below and above the macula and papillo macular bundle so above that they will arch so these are called as superior arcuate fibers and these are below are called inferior arcuate fibers so there is horizontal raphe here okay so between saf and iaf what is the horizontal raphe so did you understand this in the retinal fibers if you understand uh, this anatomy only you will understand the visual field defects they are saying arrangement of nerve fibers within optic head also they have explained here you can see that here uh, so here they are saying that from the peripheral part so this is peripheral they go peripherally in optic disc right and whichever central they go centrally in optic disc right so the ones in center they are kind of they don't lie deep that's what you should understand the peripheral ones lie deep so they are saying the arcuate nerve fibers occupy the so which or you know these arcuate fibers are most sensitive to glaucomatous damage okay the arcuate fibers are most uh, sensitive to glaucomatous damage and the macular fibers are resistant to glaucomatous changes so macular fibers are here isn't it the macular fibers are most res resistant to glaucomatous damage and ex this explains the retention of the central vision till end so they have this tunnel vision and all right that is explained by this macular fibers they are not so uh, prone to gl glaucomatous damage so now you understood now let us start understanding this nomenclature they are saying initially whatever visual field defects will be there there will be in the barum's area okay so that is why they are putting here barum's area so where is this area 10 to 25 degree from fixation so where is 10 to 25 degree from fixation they are already showing here 10 to what did they say sorry 10 to what was it here 10 to 25 okay so let us try to find 10 to 25 10 to 25 somewhere here so in this area if there is uh, uh, the initial loss will be here okay so anywhere here it can be there so this is where it will start so they'll have a problem here or a problem here or a problem here okay so let us look at this uh, more detail what exactly this diagram says let us look at here so this is bearing of blind spot bearing of blind spot you can see the blind spot other than that something is there bearing of blind spot then b b is what super paracentral scotoma so this is a superior sorry superior paracentral scotoma then this is sidus scotoma sidus scotoma is actually nothing but a sickle shape okay you can see it's a sickle shape sidus scotoma then you have Barum's scotoma then here you have double arcuate scotoma and Roni's central nasal step so this is the nasal step so this is what the diagrams are so initially where it is in the Barum's area now let's go down to the details go down please yes so isopter contraction will appear it refers to mild generalized constriction of the central as well as the peripheral field so basically there is going to be constriction of the isopter you know these isopters right so there is mild constriction central as well as peripheral so this is earliest visual field defect occurring in glaucoma however it is limited um, 
diagnostic value it may occur in other conditions also so remember this can occur in other conditions also this may occur in other conditions also what are we talking about isoptic contraction next bearing of blind spot it is a it is it can be considered as an early glaucomatous change but it is very non specific again so this also they are it's saying it is not specific to glaucoma bearing of blind spot you saw right there is exclusion of the blind spot from the central field okay so this bearing of blind spot occurs due to inverse curve of the outer boundary of the 30 degree central field so the 30 degree central field is where here the inner inverse curve of the outer boundary of the 30 degree central field so that is why it will cause the bearing of blind spot okay guys look at this one this is very very important paracentral scotoma so this is the earliest clinically significant field defect this is very important earliest clinically significant field defect is what paracentral scotoma small wing shaped so where is that so that is here here they have shown superior paracentral scotoma usually it will be on one side only okay either superior or inferior which will be so it will be here they are saying superior paracentral scotoma so it may appear either below or above the blind spot in the bearance area an arcuate area extending above and below the blind spot between 10 to degree of fixation point there they said 25 now they are saying 20 20 okay so you understood paracentral scotoma is the next one so you have to draw this diagram then side is scotoma so with the passage of time this uh, paracentral scotoma will join with the blind spot and form a sickle shaped scotoma known as sidal scotoma let us look at sidal scotoma please bring this image here so here you have the sidal scotoma sickle shape you can see here this uh, this uh, scotoma joined with the blind spot so it is causing this sidal scotoma which is like a sickle so remember always superior or inferior they don't cross the line arcuate or gerims or a bierims scotoma right arcuate or bierims scotoma now this is the fifth one what was the first one guys isopter contraction right then you had this bearing of blind spot then they told about paracentral scotoma here they have not shown that isopter contraction right isopter contraction uh, bearing of blind spot paracentral scotoma sidal scotoma now we are coming to this one this is what arcuate or bierims scotoma so arcuate or bierims scotoma so that they are representing here can you see arc it is like an arc and it is in the bierims area so arcuate or bierims scotoma okay so let's look at this one now what are what is the explanation it is formed at a later stage by the extension of the sidal scotoma in an area above or below the fixation point to reach the horizontal line so that uh, sidal scotoma only they are saying uh, it will either uh, extend uh, above or below the fixation point right as an arc it will extend right to reach the horizontal line where is the horizontal line here right so it is going above the fixation point so this causes bierims scotoma damage to adjacent fibers causes a peripheral breakthrough so we saw that one retinal ganglion cell damage will uh, have a cascade effect because of the toxins right and all adjacent fibers also will start dying so they are saying damage to adjacent fibers cause a peripheral breakthrough let's try to understand this diagram here they have shown you gerims area bierims area they have shown here right this entire thing is the bierims area 25 only they have marked but the scotoma is little more inside so they have shown the scotoma here right this is the bierim scotoma what is this this is paracentral scotoma this is the blind spot very right what is the sidal scotoma here they have shown it below actually sidal scotoma then what is this this is the fixation point isn't it what have they marked it as central scotoma okay and there is something else here we are not going through all that so what and all have we seen so far we looked at isopter contraction bearing of blind spot paracentral scotoma sidal scotoma and arcuate of bierims scotoma we have finished this much now let us move to the last one what is the last one here looks like both the sides nicely it has come let us look at this so the next one is 
ring or double arcuate scotoma it develops when two arcuate scotomas join together like this is the only thing that was left no even still more horrible things are there looks like okay anyways look at this so both the sides this guy got uh, arcuate scotomas so double arcuate scotoma and roni's central nasal step so there is some nasal step here you can see they are not totally joined okay then what are they talking about Ronnie's central nasal step it is created when the two arcuate scotomas run in different arcs and meet to form a sharp right angle defect at the horizontal meridian what is this it is created when the two arcuate scotomas run at different arcs yes meet to form a sharp right angle defect at the horizontal meridian okay so we'll try to understand this again so sharp right angle something like this at the horizontal meridian so that is the ronis central nasal step peripheral field defects now peripheral field defects they sometimes appear at an early stage so basically till now whatever we saw was central right all of them are central within this 30 degree so everything is central otherwise uh, peripheral means what will be there how much will be there go here and see till how many degrees you have so till 80 they have marked here see till 30 is here that is what we are looking at right so till 80 it is possible guys 80 90 so till now we were in central now it went to peripheral peripheral field defects also so they appear at an uh, sometimes at an early stage sometimes only in late stage of the disease the peripheral nasal step of ronis results from unequal contraction of the peripheral isopter peripheral nasal step of ronis okay peripheral nasal step of ronis this results from unequal contraction of the peripheral isopter so something in the periphery also they are having some nasal step now just remember these people will have scotoma okay but they will it's such a slow progressive condition that they will be uh, having some uh, they will not be aware of the scotoma unless they are very sensitive okay so lastly they are talking about advanced glauco glau glaucomatous field disease okay So here they are talking about small island of central vision, tubular vision, tunnel vision, and a small and a small island of temporal vision is left. <clears throat> If this is right eye, <clears throat> this will be temporal vision. This will be nasal vision, right? Correct or not? The patient, if he is able to see temporal, what will he say? That he is able to see here. This will be using the nasal retina. So what is this temporal vision using? temporal visual field is using the nasal retina you can understand so nasal retina so this is the nasal retina and this is the temporal retina you are understanding right this is the right eye so this is the nose this is the nasal retina so they think this nasal retina is resistant to the glaucomatous stage but i thought macular is resistant okay let us say this is also type of uh, nasal itself the most sensitive they said is the arcuate is it it okay guys yes, humphrey's field analyzer single field print out they are using some hfa so to analyze the visual field right and then they will grade it so this is the humphrey field analyzer and this is some image they have got they have to always clinically correlate it and they can um, tell the severity of glaucoma mild moderate severe mild means normal visual field moderate means visual field abnormalities in one hemi field and severe means visual field abnormalities in both hemi fields and within 5 degrees of fixation progression in visual field defects they want to uh, print out and analyze the progression okay what else is there so we are done with visual field defects next we have to move on to investigations other investigations that you will do diagnosis and management just let's take a quick view of what exactly is left So investigations means they are talking about tonometry, central corneal thickness, diurnal variation test, gonioscopy, all this that we have already saw. Slit lamp examination of anterior segment, documentation of optic disc changes, perimetry to detect visual field defects, nerve fiber analyzer, provocative tests are required in borderline cases. Okay, this is nothing new here in investigations. Now how to classify it as? How do you classify as early, moderate, severe? some very specific points are there so to do diagnosis you will check what and all intraocular pressure optic disc visual field defects management now we'll have to look at the treatment 
we'll just go through this very quickly okay medical therapy because the angle is open you can give uh, medicines what medicines you will give to lower the intraocular pressure to how much do you want to lower it so you have to fix some target pressure isn't it so you will get single therapy combination therapy etc etc you will uh, also monitor the disc changes and field changes so what and all you you can give prostaglandin analogs which will increase the outflow like latanoprost bimatoprost unoprostone please remember these names then you can have uh, beta blockers which will reduce the secretion remove uh, remember timolol maleate okay then adrenergic drugs like epinephrine brimonidine bye bye you can remember brimonidine it decreases the production and the outflow is it also yes so it does two things this is an adrenergic drug epinephrine brimonidine then you have carbonic anhydrase inhibitors which decrease the production so you have like uh, dorzolamide pilocarpine is there pilocarpine actually increases aqueous outflow guys uh, but this is not used much okay so what and all increases aqueous outflow let us prostaglandin will increase outflow pilocarpine all these increase outflow but pilocarpine they are not using now because it has lot of problems it's so used only as last option other than that what and all you have so first of all what and all increases outflow prostaglandin epinephrine brimonidine pilocarpine okay other than that what and all will inhibit the production inhibit production name itself it's the carbonic anhydrase inhibit will inhibit the production then beta blocker will block the production you can remember like that isn't it so these are all the drugs so you have combination therapy etc etc you can use hyperosmotic agents like mannitol right mannitol also you can use then you have laser trabeculoplasty guys we have finished medical where are we here in the uh, we are here investigations we finished diagnosis diagnosis also we finished now in management medical we finished medical what and all we saw increase outflow uh, prostaglandin pilocarpine epinephrine brimonidine all that decrease production we saw all those blockers beta blocker and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors they decrease the production itself then now coming to laser and surgical this is what we have to look at in the management of what primary open angle glaucoma laser let's look at laser you have argon laser trabeculoplasty so if you give all the medicines and it's not working then you can do this uh, laser beam you will give and you will do uh, put it on the trabecular meshwork argon laser right and you will do what you will try to reduce the intraocular pressure how so basically you will increase the outflow so outflow will ma mainly outflow will increase right from the trabecular meshwork so trabe trabecular meshwork obviously you will have destroy it the collagen will shrink okay and the opening you'll open up the trabecular spaces and you can reduce the intraocular pressure by around 10 mm of mercury around that you can remember so basically complications can be uh, transient inflammation transient acute rise in intraocular pressure then uh, hemorrhage right all that you can write or uveitis etc now coming to selective laser trabeculoplasty selective means pigmented they will target the pigmented trabecular meshwork okay only the pigmented ones they will target so we are done with laser you can read more about it from the textbook next let us move on to surgical so when will you do surgical first of all that we have to see right surgical we will do only if there is uh, despite all this medical therapy and laser non compliance yes non availability of this uh, lasers is it alt means what laser argon laser trabeculoplasty selective laser trabeculoplasty is it alt yes slt yes alt is argon laser trabeculoplasty slt means selective laser trabeculoplasty so all these facilities you don't have of laser then uh, me medical is not working eyes having advanced disease so you will do surgery so what are the surgeries you will do you have trabeculectomy and then there is one more called as some fistulizing filtration surgery new channel for the aqueous outflow you will create okay so this is trabeculo trabeculectomy so you will remove the trabecular meshwork is it the trabeculectomy it is so they are going via the sclera and they are doing trabeculectomy other than this the surgical option is what fistulizing or filtration surgery where you will create a completely new channel okay so that's all for now in open primary open angle glaucoma we have finished even the treatment now even this laser and surgical both we finished 
so the complete it is complete now so what and all we saw in this video we saw what primary open angle glaucoma is we saw the risk factors we saw the pathogenesis why the intraocular pressure rises how the optic nerve gets damaged what are the symptoms the patient presents with what are the signs anterior chamber intraocular pressure diurnal variation test early optic test changes advanced optic atrophy visual field defects all those cotomas we saw investigations uh, same things the gonioscopy perimetry etc diagnosis you will be able to uh, diagnose uh, management how will you do medical management with all these uh, prostaglandin spilo uh, beta blockers etc Car uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors laser argon laser trabeculoplasty then you have selective also where only the pigmented will be affected slt alt surgical you have trabeculectomy and fistulizing or filtration surgery to create a new outflow path that completes primary open angle glaucoma bye bye